Hello. Yes, <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are two sisters who share our fondness for knitting, the things that we create, and the love we have for the knitting community. And we do it all with a little twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. I am Frivolous Dawn, and in our family's birth order, birth order I am the fourth of eight kids. I was going to say eight students. <laughs> Fourth of eight children. How's that? And we'll keep going. Fourth of eight children. (laughs) And hello, my name's Frugal Miss Penny, and I am the oldest of the eight. And we actually have a couple other family members involved in the podcast. Faithful Nikki is our statistician and note taker. She is third in the birth order. And you all know our lovely niece, Miss Brianna. She is the daughter of number seven in the birth order. We are so grateful for those of you who are returning. Hello and a hearty welcome back. We hope that during this episode, you glean a nugget or two from our adventures and our musings. And we appreciate you making time for us. And for those of you who are first time viewers, we're tickled pink (laughs) that you stopped by and decided to give us a watch. We're always hopeful that you learn something from our adventures. So we hope you do today as well. And we hope you come back for episode 64. But right now, grab your knitting, your favorite note-taking device, and your sense of humor, because this is just the beginning of episode 63 of Frivolous and Frugal. Take it away, Dawn. All right. What is that beautiful gold you're wearing around your neck? Well, actually, it's not my color, but it is a beautiful gold. (laughs) This is the Friday morning brioche scarf, a class that I took from you. Yes, you master teacher, you. Um, It is a pattern by Kate Atherley. I knit it in Cascade Anthem on a U.S. size nine. I gave it both um, a single dollar sign for the fiber, and I think I gave the pattern three dollar signs on my frugalometer but first brioche project I really enjoyed it you did a marvelous job and um, I'm going to take that up this off because um it's a bit warm today what about you (laughs) I like that uh I like that pattern um I am wearing fractal danger this is a one skein fingering weight shawl by Martina Bame and you'll see it is very narrow most people would know Martina Bame from The Hitchhiker, but um, two years ago, about this time, we were a bunch of us were heading to the Zombie Knit Apocalypse Knitting Retreat, and all of us from Magpie's Cottage took a skein of yarn that Laurel dyed. Laurel's the dyer for Blue Doxy Dye Works, and she called it Magpie's Magic. And we all just knit something different, but with the same yarn. So this is nice for summer. I realized I don't have very many summer kind of scarves or shawls so I need to remedy that but um yeah it was knit on a US4 I believe and I gave three dollars to uh three dollar signs on the frugalometer to both the pattern um and the yarn oh and this was in Laurel's base called short hair and so nice base um I machine wash dry it like it um just nice lightweight so and it's blown Very out a little bit. There's a pretty pink in there, a, a little bit of a brighter pink, but the lights are blowing it up. And Very what is pretty. dear Opal wearing? Well, you know, I decided to do a bit of blocking last week. Get out. So you all saw this before it was blocked. This is my alliteration scarf number three, where I kitchenered the bottom. Previous two scarves had cuffs at the bottom. And it is just a collection of all my leftover, not just my leftover bits and bobs, but yours as well, Dawn, from our sock yarn. And I decreased the circumference on this. All the notes are on my page. It is a pattern by Teresa Shaves. And I knit it on a US size three. And it earns a strong single dollar sign on the frugal <laughs> for both the pattern and the fiber. When you say strong, I'm thinking, okay, that means increase the font, make it bold. <laughs> um, yeah, just so it's real obvious. It is highlighted. a bargain. Let me just say that. It's a bargain. Yeah. Uh, <gasps> now, I know several people are waiting to see what is back on, on Ruby. Well, what it's um, boarding. Can, can we hold till finished objects? Absolutely. Okay. 
but you know that, is a, that is a finish you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> At least in my own head, I'm the boss. <laughs> I may not be anywhere else, but ooh, so pleasant. what are you working on then? I am working on the Musselberg hat. Let me show you the pattern. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry and it is by Yuzolda Tig. It is a um, pattern that I find interesting in the sense that you pick the yarn, you pick the needle size and you um, begin the pattern and knit for an inch or so and then measure your stitches per inch. And then based on that, she has graphs that will tell you how much to increase, how long to make the hat. Okay. So I am using um, Malabrigo sock in the Ravelry Red. And when you start this hat, you start with your increases. So you do one of those pinhole cast ons, which I think is fun. Um, yeah. I followed, I think, Very Pink Knits, um, her video for um, that. And then you increase just to, to the pattern. And now I'm knitting 19 and a half inches, I think. So it'll go down 19 and a half inches and then it'll end just like this. And then the hat slips inside of itself. And so it should be a very warm hat. Now, one thing I was showing um, Penny last night with knitting on the antes, I have never seen Malabrigo sock stripe. It is not a striped yarn at all. This is just a plain old solid. So if I had that happen with Malabrigo sock in the past, I'm not aware of it. Maybe because I haven't knit um, in stock and that like this. I would have guessed that would have been more tonal and spread out throughout. So I guess you would call that a little bit of pooling, huh? Yeah, that would be interesting. Has anyone else commented on that fiber that you know of that it not, did that? Not that I'm aware of, but again, I haven't, I should probably put a query in um, Ravelry just looking at it. But um, yeah, let me give you some details on it. I am using a size um did i even put it on here i thought i did oh yeah the muscleberg us size four i gave the pattern um four dollar signs and that was kind of my joke last time uh, when you purchase it it's not in us dollars <laughs> it's in euros so a little bit different when it came through on visa and yeah. um yeah the yarn malabrigo sack i think is a reasonable workhorse so i gave that a two dollar sign on the frugalometer. Now, Miss Jen Katz, uh, Double Dog dared me to knit this with her. She got hers done in three days. <laughs> this is three weeks and I am still going. So um, yeah, I've just been doing this like for my meeting knitting or car knitting. So yeah, so again, the Musselberg hat by Yazolda Tig. What are you working on? What's on your needles? Well, um, I am currently, you know, I'm monogamous. But I am working on the crocus cardigan. It is a small baby cardigan because it's a UFO. Um, I am, it is just a very pretty, pretty pattern. Oops, the bottom is curling because as you can see, I'm just working on one of the front pieces. This pattern is by um, Annie Dempsey. Oh, yeah. And I'm knitting it in, in yar uh, Valley Yarns Charlemont. It is a beautiful silk wool um, polyester blend. In fact, that's what we bought for the, uh, what do you call it? Tenacity. But then oh. I decided I needed to get this sweater done. It's number five in the six sweet sweaters. And so that's what I'm knitting it with on size threes and fours. Yarn is a $3 sign for me. And the pattern was a $1 sign on the frugalometer. And web is that from webs it is from webs. That, that's their base their yarn yeah somebody else was talking about that i don't know if it was on our virtual knit night or on a podcast i watched and what a nice yarn um Ooh. Yeah. i knit with it definitely again mm -hmm. yeah and now, I, we'll see how it blocks out and how it washes but yeah i love just that little bit of silk in something it just really increases the drape mm -hmm. um so I kind of think the same about a little bit of cashmere too. <laughs> no, you. <laughs> oh, stop it. Okay. Um, I have another project I'm working on that will be new to show. This is the Nina Shaw, and it is a new pattern out by um, Beatrice Rubio. And we knew Beatrice Rubio as the designer of the Hermes hat that we did a knit along with. 
So it is a DK weight shawl, two color. And I'm afraid the colors may blow out here a little bit, but I'll see if I can hold it back. So it started with the dark color and did the increases. And then of course you see the stripe section and now I'm in the lace section. I just started the third of what will be ultimately three repeats. Um, let's see if I can bring it in a little bit. The yarn Ooh, is white pretty. with speckles. So I use Lolo did it in her DK base. This was deep stash for me. I don't know why I ever bought it the first time. Now this looks black, do I assume to you? Yes, it does. It's called Blackberry Jam and it's black with just a little oh, bit of purple. Go. That's better, Dawn. We can you see it. Yeah, can you see that little bit of purple? Yeah. And then in the speckles in here, Blackberry Jam is one of the colors. But I don't think it's too heavily speckled. Uh, be honest with me, um, I don't think it ruins the lace pattern. No, but I think you'll need something dark behind it to see the lace pattern. Yeah, yeah, I should probably. I should probably wear black more, don't you think? <laughs> like like five days enough isn't enough. Um, but it's going to be long. This is a 60 inch needle. And I think it goes 90 inches total. Now this too was a double dog dare by our friend, Miss Renee. She is knitting it too. So again, this is Blackberry Jam, the dark color. And the sparkle is called the um, Countess Dowager. Um, and I assume, why do I assume that that's a play to Downton Abbey? I could be wrong. I could be wrong about that. I and um, it's on a US 6. I'm following the pattern exactly. And Beatrice writes a nice pattern. It's the first shawl pattern. Um, easy to follow. I'm just thrilled with it. Um, I would like it to be done maybe by our next podcast. We'll see. But it's been a little warm here, hot and humid, so I can't knit with this if we're outside because you know how wool gets when you're in a humid environment, it almost gets yes. like sticky. Yes. So um, I was knitting this. I started it on our trip to Florida. So we drove to Florida and back. That's why we've been gone a couple of weeks um, from podcasting, but in the car, it worked nice. Mm -hmm. um, until you got to lace, then I needed quiet. But <laughs> yeah, so again, I love the pattern. It is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. Um, I called the pattern $2 signs on the frugalometer and uh, Lolo did it as an indie dyed yarn. So I called that a $3 sign. It's a 24 row repeat for the lace. So I, don't, I can't memorize that. So I've just been following along row by row. So loving it, loving it, loving it. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. Yeah. Um, my one project, since I am monogamous, I wanted to explain why I'm not working on um, Ishmeen. Um, and Ishmeen is a sweater that I'm knitting for my son. I have finished the body of yeah. the sweater, as you can see. And it is waiting for, whoa, it is waiting for me to attach the sleeves. Now, this young man is coming home in a couple of weeks, and I want to make sure that the <laughs> sleeve length is right. He swears he has 21-inch arms. If that child doesn't, I'm going to beat him over the head with the sleeve. So anyway, <laughs> this is 21 inches, and what I've done is something that's new to me. It just came to my mind, so I thought I would share it. Um, as you look up the back of my sleeve, you can see, it's hard to see, I've got little stitch oh. markers every 10 row or every seven rows where I've increased. I did that all the way up the sleeve until right here. And I started putting lifelines in every seven rows so that if this is not wide enough, I know where to tink back to right. do my increase so that my increases are even. Uh, because you do a cable on the opposite side. So you want to make sure you know which row of that cable you're on. So I wrote it down on the pattern, not only the seventh row, but which row of the cable pattern. It's a 26 row repeat. And it's not um, a symmetric cable at all. So it's not intuitive. Anyway, so I've done that and I've never done it before, but I'm trying to see if that'll help me with my size of my sleeves being the same. So that's why you can see these lifelines in here. That is brilliant. Yeah. 
So once the child gets home and we try it on, the reason we have to make sure that the sleeve length is right because the cable comes up over the shoulder. So I oh. have to make sure that it fits him. And he's kind of um, muscular. Wouldn't you say he's, he's yeah. pretty muscular? More than um, kind of, yeah. yeah. Pretty muscular, not only when it comes to his um, shoulders, but his deltoids, his triceps. And so I want to make sure it's not too tight. So yeah, that's why I have set it to the side and I'm working on UFOs. All right, give us the details on the yarn. Oh, well, thank you for reminding me. Um, it is by the fiber company. It is Erin Moore, which is a beautiful Donegal tweed in the um, Glenbaugh Castle colorway. And it is knit on size eight and nine needles. I gave the pattern, um, let me see, I want to make sure I'm doing this correctly. Yeah, I gave the fiber $5 signs on my frugalometer and the pattern is a dollar sign. Um, the pattern I would say is not probably real intuitive for a new knitter. Mm -hmm. I've had to make some real mental um, gymnastics to get from one instruction to another. And it's not my first garment that I've knit. And I'm not an experienced garment knitter, but it has not been extremely intuitive, not very, very hard, but not intuitive, like knitting pure and simple or tin can knits patterns for beginners. Those are great. Just put them on your needles and go. This required a little bit more experience. Wow. Very well, good. Thank you. Well, since we spent about not counting 3,500 miles in a car over the last <laughs> couple of weeks, I got some knitting done while in the vehicle. So the first one I'll show you is what is on the mannequin. Well, let me show you the pattern first. That would probably be a little more helpful. It is a pattern by Church Mouse Yarns and Tees. It is called the Shoulder Cozy. And you can see what the picture was supposed to be. It was supposed to be like a little capelet and it narrows up around the shoulder. So you do some decreases. I don't want to say much more than that since it's a paid for pattern, but I wanted this picture. I wanted it as a long cowl. So that's what I did. The pattern calls for holding, I think, uh, two lace weights together. Um, it is just long. So I think it'll be nice if I don't need the warmth around my neck, I can just let it go and tuck it into my coat. But if I need warm, look at this. This is like wearing a cloud around your neck. Oh, I love it. The more I, I see it. it, the more I like it, Dawn. Yep. And it was Miss Norma who did a similar one that I just, uh, she said she wore it more than anything else that she knit, so I trusted that. Let me show you the yarn that I used. Rowan Alpaca Classic. These are 25 gram balls. Um, I bought four of them and I only needed um, three. So I'll be able to take this one back. Um, US 13. So it works fast. It is garter in the round. Now, a couple of things. Um, I have the notes on my project page. I didn't want that shoulder decrease, so I didn't do that. And I always like my cowls or scarves a little bit longer. So I increased the initial stitch count by 20. That was just a random number. Um, but you'll see that I would not be able to wear this as a shoulder cozy unless you joined me in it. Because um, this is way too wide, you know, to wear around your shoulders. So, but look how airy that is. Ooh, that is, that is just to too stop. much fun. So, so you could hold uh, kids. I think the pattern, it calls for Rowan Kid Silk Haze held with a lace, two laces. I think anything light and airy. Um, yeah. Wow. So that was um, kind of an impromptu knit along that a few of us did. <clears throat> Love it. And I used a Yukalon um, wool wash with jasmine scent. So boy, does that smell good when you're wearing it. Now that is a paid for pattern. I think it's, um, I thought it was a little high on my frugalometer. So I probably called it a three in the yarn. Um, Rowan yarn, I think is a little on the um, pricier side too. So I called that a three. Um, yeah. So I used about 75 grams, US 15, US 13. So I like it. I think it'll get a lot of wear. This so week. a good pattern for beginners, not only in knitting, but working with mohair. 
Yes. And you know, the curse of mohair. Don't make a mistake. Because pulling it out, it with it. the fibers pulling it out can be frustrating. Now, if I did make a mistake, I pretended I didn't. So <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like see the way you think. I see nothing. And I didn't do an aggressive block, but it was a great project to block using wires. I hadn't used my wires mm -hmm. in a long time, but it fed right through the edges. So um, I think I blocked it, folded over 36 inches wide, and it's 18 inches deep. And I think you could easily make it grow if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so if you have some mohair at home or um, really just a lace weight or fingering weight, the, you know, the thicker the yarn, the denser it'll be, but on a US 13. Yeah. You know, yeah. So that was good. Very cool. And the other thing about working with mohair or like this um, alpaca, you get all that fuzz all over your pants or it's in the air. It's kind of fun. It's in your nose. I know. Yeah. In your mouth. Very good. Now, um, I'm going to assume that there's nothing else on the show notes for you for finished oh, objects. No, no nothing right. for me. What about you? All right. A couple more again, because I traveled. It was look at this pattern. This is called Roadrunner DK. It's a pattern by Mary Ann Lammers or Lamers. I'm going to say Lammers phonetically. Lammers. I believe. Um, it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. And I saw this on the three ply podcast. And let's see if I can take this off. Um, it is a one skein DK. I don't know if I'd have uh, done it just seeing the pattern, but once those ladies had it done, I liked it. So let's see if I can do it. You, this uh, pointed edge goes right up the side. Yep, I had to see it on. Um, it's gorgeous. I like it. Oh my goodness. I like and is it, it too. fair to say it was a fairly quick knit? Pretty quick. And um, you, you can memorize this, these little points pretty quick. Now I bought a hundred gram skein of DK and this is what I had left. So maybe 15 grams. Couldn't you have used that somehow? Well, I could have kept making it longer, but I had to make the neck longer, whiter. Oh, and okay. I didn't want that. So this yarn is Julie Aslin Lizu DK. Why not knit with Julie Aslin if you get the chance? She's a Canadian indie dyer. Oh. <laughs> Good thing uh, we don't get paid for this podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah. You guys, Nor do we have an editor? That will right. be obvious when they watch it. <laughs> this color is called hydrangea. Is that not spectacular? It is. Oh, I love, I, my yard is full of hydrangeas too. So maybe there was a connection there. Um, paid for pattern. Um, she has two Roadrunner patterns. One is written for worsted weight, I believe. One is written for DK. Um, I just bought the DK one. Um, I called it a three for the pattern and a three for the yarn. If you have one skein of DK, I've seen it done in salads. I've seen it done in tonals. I don't know if I would, um, I bet it would look nice in a speckled too. I just don't know about a self-striping yarn. I'd have to see how that would work, but um, I'm tempted, tempted maybe to do another one of these because if you're gonna order Julie Aslan yarn, you wouldn't order just one skein. Oh no, not if no. you were frivolous, you wouldn't. No. If you were well, frugal, you'd wait for a swap or a giveaway. Well, I have to get free shipping. See how much money I saved? I was frugal. I got free shipping. <laughs> you are so bad. The things we do to justify. Now, the other one, and I did not bring the pattern with me, is I was surprised how nice this turned out. This is called the Four Color Marled Cowl by Petra Breakstone. I believe it's a free pattern. On Ravelry. I'm going to teach this class at Silver Thimble in the fall. Um, the yarn I used was Barocco Quinoa, and they don't have um, colors or names on their um, ball bands, they're just numbers. So this is their cream, of course, the red, the gray, and the black. And it is, um, you hold two strands. So as you start to fade or graduate to the next one, you just drop one strand and pick up the next color. Now those were 50 gram balls and I had a little bit left over. So you can see where these stripes are a little bit wider, these first three, and then these are narrow. I think I would have had enough yarn to make them all wide if I wanted to. 
Um, quinoa is discontinued, but um, silver thimble has quite a bit of it. So it'd be a great class. I think this would be great for a beginner. It really is stockinette with a little bit of ribbing. Pick fingering weight yarn and have a blast um, holding two fingering together. I just thought the colors turned out nice. And I wish I was responsible for picking them, but Nan um, picked these out to do one for herself. And so I just mimicked her. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, is that where they say imitation is a best form of flattery? Oh, there you go. I imitated her. All you right. Did. And last but not least, looky, looky. The Oslo hat is done. The Oslo hat is by Petite Knits. Let's see if I can get this a little bit closer. Can you see very subtle color changes? Yes, I can. Yeah, I know it's blowing out. You guys, that's the mohair that's changing colors. It's not the yarn. So the yarn is um, a yarn that was a gift to me and I'm gonna read it so I don't get it wrong. It's Canadian U Blue Face Luster Romney Mix in cream. I believe it's a, a, a mill near, near Calgary. Miss Norma gave that to me as a gift. A little rustic, um, but that mohair is Kid Silk Haze Mohair Stripe in the precious colorway. I followed the pattern. I didn't want to follow the pattern. I kept thinking it was wrong, but once again, trust the pattern. <laughs> I used a US two and a half. I followed the pattern exactly. I'm a loose knitter. So a lot of the project page said their, their hats turned out small and that they would want to um, increase the size. This one fits me nice. It's snug, but it's not super tight. I haven't decided on a pom-pom or not, but can you see? Oh, there's an end to tuck in. You do this little inch of uh, reverse um, stockinette just to help with the fold, but that's a folded brim. So seven that inches, is, yeah. I think, but I trusted that. I, I checked with a few people who are knitting it um, too. That is just a delightful little hat, don't you think? I do. I think it's very delightful. I don't have enough the yarn left to do mittens, but I bet I do have enough mohair. Like if I were to do mittens, maybe do a cuff Ooh. with a little bit of the mohair. Yeah, that would be yeah. nice. So this is our June hat knit along, the Oslo hat by Petite Knits. Um, Fruglometer, I did three for the pattern, um, three for the yarn, um, although one of the yarns was a gift, but it was from an indie dyer. So um, yeah, I like it. It might be the first time I actually knit the hat of the month in the month it was supposed to be knit. So that's not true. I think it might be because I tend to be off a month or so. But yeah, that is what is off my needles. And that will slow down now as I am teaching this summer. So, but that was all nice car knitting. Um, Looks like a very beautiful project, sis. Very beautiful. Yeah, so that is what's off my needle. So what is, um, yeah. oh, go ahead. What do we do next? What, what are well, we learning? What are learning? Or what's, well, have you ever heard that phrase? Again, this is super profound, right? Um, I tell my students all the time that your brain will only um, absorb what the butt will endure. <laughs> so you can only sit for so long, right? And then you have to just get up and move and all that. So that's why obviously you give breaks in class and all that. But I wanted to make a knitting connection to that. And I realized that I can only knit what my brain can absorb at the time. I think brain width or brain space, however you want to call that, brain bandwidth, there are times where I just cannot do something complicated. I don't have the ability to focus. I don't have that brain energy or that brain space. And you think I would learn when I try to, that is when I make amazingly silly mistakes and then have to go back and either frog or tink. And it's just not very, not a good use of my time. So summer is a little crazy for us right now, doing a little bit of traveling, some house things too. And there are days where all I can do is stock in it. Mm -hmm. So that's just what I'm going to do. And there are other days where I can sit down and try to brioche or do some color work. And I just have to make sure I'm making good choices because like you, my knitting time is going to be limited now for the next um, 
couple of months while we te I teach through the summer. So I want to, if I only have an hour or so a day to knit, I want to make good use of that time as opposed to forcing myself to do it because of some crazy deadline I had in my head. You know, it's not a race. Um, keep reminded me of that because we're doing lots of knit alongs right now. It looks like a lot more are going to start here in the next few weeks um, to next few months. You know, it's not a race. Enjoy the journey and do what I'm capable of doing at the time, not what I think my self-imposed expectations are. That was pretty profound. Yeah. The brain will only absorb what the butt will endure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get paid to teach. That's kind of a scary thought, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you do and you are a marvelous teacher tell my students that way oh, very well, good what are you learning my, my learning is not nearly as profound but i wanted to mention two things the first one is i think it's very important for those of us who work with fibers to communicate with our indie dyers as yeah. well as our commercial dyers if we struggle with the fiber either in the way it was spun or in the way we talk about this Dawn, or the way that it's even put in skeins or caked where it has multiple joins or in the way that it's dyed. And I promised you all, I'd give you a follow-up regarding the yarn that I used for the wingspan. I contacted the dyer, Miss Shireen at the blue brick about the bleeding that we had and about the dye line. And she responded back to me. It kind of explained how some things like that can happen if there's oversaturation or if the dye did not get fixed in its first um, two-step process. That's where they fix it usually with heat or with a citric acid soak. Um, and then she also explained that it must, my, my yarn must have missed her quality assurance step because that shouldn't have happened. So I was able to chat with her about that and about how we can provide that feedback to her so that it doesn't happen to someone else. Because as we've talked about, when you spend hours and hours knitting something, only to have tried it. In fact, one of the things, I don't even know if I told you this, John, one of the things she said is, you probably could have soaked it in vinegar first. Well, which is what we did, right? But I forgot to tell her that in my email. Anyway, I think it's important for us to communicate so that they can provide um, quality fiber for all of us mm -hmm. because they don't know what they don't know. So I think it's unfair for us if we have a problem to only share that amongst ourselves, but never share it with the dyer. So I encourage you to do that in a very professional and polite way so that they can continue to improve. Because the truth of the matter is, I can't remember a time in knitting history like this where we have so many options for where we spend our money and for whom we support. So I think they all want our support. So okay. if they don't know that there's a problem, then they can't correct it. So I would encourage all of us, if you have a problem, just to share it, not with the motive of any retribution or any um, reconciliation, but just so that that dyer knows. So I did do that and I wanted to pass that along to you all. Secondly, remember, it must have been several episodes ago where on you two, we ask you what your favorite wool wash was. Yeah. Well, Vaughn and I have purchased um, at least one of every different uh, wool wash we could find. So I chose this last time to use, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know if it's e-cover or ecover. It's spelled E-C-O, and that's on the top of the label. V-E-R is at the bottom of the label. So I don't know if it's Ecover or whatever. Um, I chose to use that when I did my most recent blocking. Does not have lanolin. It is just a wash. Um, it had a pleasant smell. I did not notice anything particular about it. I used um, one yarn that I knit my Hermes hat in as Huana, and I lost some color with that. I don't know if I would have lost color if I used Eucalon or not, but I did lose some color. It's a tonal yarn, so it didn't make much difference, but my um, color catcher picked up a nice shade of pink on that. <laughs> so anyway, I've used it. 
I used it all with superwash wools because if I'm using an all wool fiber that's not superwash, I usually want to replace the lanolin in it. So it worked well for my superwashes. And I totally forgot to use my tuft woolen soap. So I will uh -huh. do that the next time I block. Okay. Um, if I had to guess, it'll be red. <laughs> so <laughs> very good. So what is all happening at Frivolous and Frugal? Well, as you know, we never have a lack for activities. So let me just say we are eking closer to the 2000 subscriber giveaway. So as we get to that, we will be announcing it. Secondly, on our list is we do have a YouTube giveaway scheduled for episode 64. So during episode 64, we will give you a question to answer. And as always, during Knitting with the Aunties, we will select with our random comment generator. The question that I believe that we'll use will be announced during episode 64. So make sure you stay tuned for that. The finished fix flipper frog at Cal is going strong. Oh my goodness, over 2000 posts. All you need to do is peruse that for ideas and inspiration. We will have another drawing for that during episode 66. As Dawn mentioned, our June hat Cal is the Oslo hat. We have one more week of that or so, and then we will announce the new hat for July during episode 64. And we'll probably also draw a winner from that. So if you knit the Oslo, put it in our hat cal forum on Ravelry. Same thing with our June ornament. This ornament for the month of June was the personalized bobble ornament by Anna Wadler or Wadler. And we will probably choose one winner from that thread as well on Ravelry. The sweet little nothing cow continues to go. It's being moderated by both Dawn and Miss Pink. Uh, we have already had one giveaway, and I believe we have another one coming up soon. Yep. So stay tuned. Post your finished shawls and questions in that thread. Probably um, most exciting on our list of events is going to be our June mini meetup. I mean, June, July mini meetup in Chicago. So there is a thread on Ravelry that will give you the hotel name, the code for um, discounted rooms. We will be meeting July 30th through the 31st. That's a Friday and a Saturday. Choose your own level of participation as always. If you can only stop in for a quick knit, do that. If you're able to spend the night with us at the hotel, you're welcome to do that as well. We will probably get up on Sunday morning, have a cup of coffee together, and then disperse from there. So if you need to know that timeline for planning, that's what it looks like. As we have stated earlier, we will be following the hotel's COVID guidelines. Then we have our June morning knit together, and that is scheduled right now for Saturday, June 26th from 10 to 12, 10 a.m. to 12 noon Central Standard Time. We are excited for that. We will be uh, moderating from an undisclosed location. You'll have to pop in to find out where we are. And if you're interested in joining us, we try to post that link in Ravelry and via email about an hour before the event so that if there are technical difficulties, we can walk you through those. Just so you know, once again, it's choose your own level of participation. Unless you're kind of a cheeky participant, and then we may just <laughs> call on you. Um, but we would love to have you. And if I don't have your email address and you would like me to email you the link, please email with me at my contact information below in the show notes. And then our July evening virtual knit night is scheduled for Saturday, July 10th. That will be from seven to nine Central Standard Time. Once again, choose your own level of participation. And if you just want nothing but two hours of knitting talk, and that's all we do is we only talk about knitting, then this is an event for you and we'd love to have you. We really appreciated the new faces that we saw for our June evening event. That was lots of fun. You know, I'm gonna throw in, um... That sounded better than throw up, didn't it? I'm yes, gonna throw it in. Yes. Well, only a little bit better, but it did sound better. 
If you can't attend those, you should look at the show notes that Penny posts in Ravelry just to look at all the different things we talk about. Not only patterns, but yarns, yarn shops, different knitting techniques. We had a great discussion about test knitters, not only from the perspective of people who do the test knitting, but from a designer and what they expect from test knitters. So um, again, if you we wish you could join us, but if you can't, please don't hesitate um, to look. And you include all the links that we can find. Mm -hmm. And that list is impeccable, by the way. Um, so, wow, I just get so jazzed after those events. Yeah, they really are a lot of fun. And I think as we have gotten to know one another, we are learning one another's aesthetics. And so it is fun to have others suggest patterns yeah. to us. Yeah. saying, you know, you really might like that. So I would agree, Dawn, it's, it's a very valuable evening together. Um, I don't believe we have any other events. That is more than enough for me. Did I forget anything? Um, nope. Can I just talk about a couple of upcoming um, knit-alongs that people have just thrown out there to do? They're not, I suppose, official or not, but um, we have been um, planning on starting Vertices Unite June 1st, that's a Stephen West paid for pattern. I think there may be a discussion board on that. If not, I'll, I will form one, but that's a June 1st cast June on. June or July, Dawn? Oh, you know what? I bet it's July 1st now that you okay. say that. Mm -hmm. It'll probably take me till next July to get it done. Um, five skeins. We all know better than that, Dawn. <laughs> you crank out Stephen West shawls like they're nothing. Well, um, people are posting their yarn choices. So if you want to go in and see some amazing color combinations, I also put the link into the Fiber Hustle guys um, when Stephen West came onto their podcast and talked about choosing colors. They're doing a knit along for that at the same time. And then some other things that um, we're talking about, maybe a September 1st start is going to be the Curvette shawl. That's another five skein Stephen West. I do believe it came as a double dog dare from Miss Jen. Um, so wow, lots of things. I, okay, I got to get that one down because I was I that went right past me. Um, we may not have talked about it, but that is um, another paid for pattern. But I'll start a discussion board on that. So you need four skeins of yarn, I think, plus a skein of mohair. Um, so yeah. Wow. I know big shawls, and then the magpie gals. This this is. We don't need to take notes on this, but the Meg Pie gals are all heading to the zombie knit apocalypse this week. So they're all casting on a sh uh, poncho. <laughs> so. I, I cannot believe you are not joining them. Oh, I'm, do, I'm casting on the poncho. Oh, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm casting on Glimer um, by Jennifer Wiseman, I think. But um, I'm just not going to ZK, but I told him I would knit with them in spirit. So there you go. I need to learn to knit in my sleep. So yes, those, are, do. those are all that huge projects. Nearly as much fun. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. um, do you have any honorable mentions? I didn't have any. Um, a couple. Miss Kim, who's one of our viewers, um, gifted me a pattern, an Isabel Kramer pattern that she knit a beautiful, beautiful shawl. You can see it if you look in our discussion board about the shawl along. And then um, our friend Miss Norma sent me a fun little quilted mug rug with knitting stuff on Aww. it. That was such a nice uh, surprise in my mailbox. So thank you, Norma. That was an amazing gift. So Well, and I need to add too, thank you, Miss Kim. You also gifted me a pattern and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, I do remember that. I, for some reason, thought I mentioned that last time, but I wouldn't have. That would have been yeah. too long ago. Yeah. You're right, Dawn. And um, I'm going to put a stay, you know, like when somebody's on, some, when somebody's on death row and they put a stay on them, does that mean they halt the process? Am yeah. I using that word right? Mm -hmm. I'm putting a stay on double dog dares. I can't take any more right now. None. Zero. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, just so you know, there was a little chat and banter about you when you signed off early during the virtual knit night. And uh, I don't think you get to make up this rule, just so you know. So you can put a stay on it all you want, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to anyway, know. Anyway, what's Some, that? Somebody tell me what that discussion No, was. don't anyone tell her. <laughs> um, 
it, it's a fun one, Don. I'm sure you're going to love it. Art, art, art. <laughs> hey, listen, as always, we end every podcast with what would Nikki say? And today is no different. So our dear faithful Nikki said this. Adjustments are necessary in most projects, teaching or golfing. Go with the flow and enjoy the process and the outcome. AKA, the brain can only handle what the bottom can endure. <laughs> right? Sometimes you just have to adjust, right? So thanks, sis, for those words of wisdom. Thank you for joining us for episode 63. As always, it's been a delight to knit with you, to chat with you, and to share what we've learned. Dawn and I and Nikki and Brianna all are hoping that your week is a sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.